Uh, Tom, thank you for your time. Really enjoyed the film. Um, as writers, I've got to ask you this. Writers are always asked, uh, um, advised to write what you know. Mm. You must have been to some pretty awful birthday parties. <laughs> <laughs> uh, None that bad, I don't think. Yeah. Um, but... Yeah, I mean, tragically, it's certainly true that we, we sort of know characters a bit like that. Mm. And also maybe we are a bit like the main character. So... Uh, yeah, we have to confess that, yeah, it's, it probably is a world we do know. Yeah, but that's why it's so authentic, mm. right? And horrible. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, it is disturbing, certainly. <laughs> um, now, you're both actors, um, and obviously, Tom, you, you're the lead in it, but mm. Tom, as an actor yourself, I'm just wondering, how did the two of you get together to write this? Well, we've been we've been doing sketch comedy for 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 a bit of time, and we started out doing Edinburgh Festival and making stuff for YouTube. Um, and then um, we had a few years just doing our, our own separate things, and then, and then it was yeah about twenty eighteen. We, we failed at those, and we're like, okay, yeah, we, we should probably just get, get the old band back <laughs> together. Um, and then we came back, and this is the first thing we we wrote, and um, and it really kind of yeah, it just flowed out, and it and it felt a very natural uh, screenplay to write. Yeah. So one of your producers, I know Tom, you you're an exec producer on it. I'm not. Oh, no, Tom, you are, Tom, you are sorry, on IMDb. I? You're an exec. Yeah, that's awesome. Isn't that? <laughs> so we, we we throw right. those we throw those credits out. <laughs> yeah, just giving them away. Yeah. Yeah. Want to get onto your agent? Yeah. Like um, but you've also got John Plowman mm. uh, yeah. as one lead, uh, as one of the producers, mm. who is a doyen of British comedy. Mm. He, he's such a massive name, so mm. influential. I'm just wondering when you submitted the script to him, or when he first see it, saw it, mm. did he have any sort of uh, suggestions that you? Uh, amended the, the script accordingly his first note was what is this about I think. Um, <laughs> but uh and but that was actually really good because it made us mm. it made us really like drill into what we were trying to achieve mm. um and i think the sort of films you know the nature of the subject matter is it's about something that you can't see you know social anxiety is a sort of presence that's like it's like the invisible stalker in the film um but it was really useful to have someone be like well you know, you, there's got to be something rigorous as well about the way you're telling that story. And, it, and it, he helped us kind of um, make some, the, some a lot of the moments a bit more substantial and think about plot a bit more. Um, yeah. And also just his experience in just stuff. I'm thinking about stuff like the casting process, you know, just someone like him can just be like, that person is very funny. Like, you know, back that person and like having that endorsement um, for the choices you're making is just hugely helpful. Well, talking about the casting, um... Demery, Dustin Demery Burns. Dustin yeah. Demery Burns. Yeah. Um, he's quite remarkable in it. But the scene, uh, and this is kind of more for yourself, Tom, right. is that you have a scene in a bath yeah. where you're at waist height to him getting naked. Yeah. Awkward scene at the best of times, I should imagine, to, <laughs> to, to have shot. Can you tell us about that? He, uh, well, Dustin, it was it was really hard to not... The shot that was really hard to get is when Dustin sort of goes for my penis and, and he sort of he puts his hand in the bath and we kept giggling at that um in a very childish way um and uh and eventually the, D, the dop just shouted at us to, to, to grow up and, and we were aware that we just weren't going to get the shot and so that sort of snapped us out of it but yeah initially dustin was a bit like oh, do i have to get naked and we were like no i think it'd be really funny if if we sort of saw just the top of of the penis i think that we were very specific we were like it's just the top yeah um, is this can I say <laughs> I don't know. Uh, and and he was like all right because he's a real you know trooper and then by the end he was like it's so liberating being naked on set is what he sort of said so that's worrying so anyone looking to cast us in anyone yeah, dropping into this interview at this point is yeah, yeah, yeah. wondering what they talking about yeah but no, what that film was, is this yeah that was a, it was a fun scene mm. to shoot actually it was kind of yeah so the character Pete uh, he goes through a variety of indignities mm. uh, throughout the film. Um, but are there any, when you were writing this, were there any moments uh, or scenes that you thought, actually, we pushed it a little bit too far here, or we're yeah. going to have to drop this? There were alternate yeah. endings, weren't there? There were sort of more horror endings. There's one mm. where, like, Pete had been fed loads of acid and, and kind of stumbled out of the house naked, and again, naked, uh, in, a, in, in just in a sleeveless shiway, and accidentally shot Sonia as she arrived. Um, that felt too too much. Yeah. to put him through but it was it was interesting um in, in in the editing process we would we would sometimes find that some scenes 
were just making you feel too sorry for this character. And we didn't want people to feel too sorry for him because then it became sad and it became about pity. And so it was just interesting how the editor could transform these moments by, you know, cutting into a close and, and actually making these kind of moments of, of hazing of Pete feel like they were more internal and were affecting the kind of um, his psyche. And so that it became, it, it, it steered the film back towards something that, that crossed a, a, a that sort of unsettled the audience from thinking, oh, is it in his head or is it real or is it horrible or whatever? Yeah. And in the writing, we were, we were a bit like, no, we've got to, you know, got to make this as truthful as possible about the type of you know, things these guys say and the type of things they do. And there was the dinner scene, there was a lot more drug taking, for example. And then when you're watching that, it's actually like, this is pretty unpleasant. Mm -hmm. There's nothing going on here other than it being like a turn off. And so, you know, you kind of, you, you lose that basically and you realize that actually there is such thing as kind of a limit. To, There's a line to, you to can realism. cross. Yeah. With those endings that you discussed, did you shoot those? And was there much discussion about what ending you would use? So much discussion. We shot two versions in the car and, and, um, and, before that, I mean, the, the 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 meat of the script took two months to write, and then it was two years to figure out an ending um, that felt satisfying. Um, but we were we were kind of like keen to do you know, like a big influence was um, was kind of movies like Festin and, and Force Majeure, and we we kind of wanted to try and pull off this thing where the tension was kept, but there was no like blood spilt, no one got their head blown off or something terrible yeah. like that. So that was the challenge. Um, and it took a long time and actually Andrew the director came up with that last line that felt satisfying to kind of hold that feeling of anxiety all the way to the end so spoiler alert for anyone watching this with that ending yeah does she marry him yeah we were talking about this the other day in a QA. and a you know either either he goes through with the marriage because he's just spineless spineless and a coward and can't stand up to her or we were thinking maybe he has such a horrible stag with his friends that you know that then sort of sets him into another spiral and then he calls it off um but yeah hopefully the the ending leaves you with a lot of um questions to pursue about about what's going to happen next and what do you think my, <laughs> my well I, i'm i was just i just thought that yeah i don't know what this says about me but it always felt good to me to just imagine the bleakest thing possible and that he would sort of you know he'd go into a loveless marriage for the rest of his life and never know where the joke was and and it's just bleak for a good deal of time beyond the film. But I, I like, I, I don't. Other people don't, see I, a bit of redemption in her. Loud, and... The more I realise um, that doesn't that sounds like I have sort of issues. And then finally, uh, we, we always ask actors this. Um, you both actors, as they will say, but are there roles in retrospect as you look back at your career, on your career and think, really wish I hadn't turned that role down. I should have taken that role. I wish I had roles I've to never, turn I've down. never turned would, a roll down. I would down. never turn a roll down, for the record. <laughs> I will do anything. Right. Okay. Yeah, be careful what you wish for. Yeah. Thank you for your time, both. I wish you all the best. Oh, with thanks it. so much. Thank Cheers. Thanks.